Hey everybody, Eurus Mixparks back with you again, and it's time to continue learning about coding. So for this lesson, I think I'd like to make a script that will give a character a speed boost for a little bit. I think that would be a really cool addition to an obby, kind of, you know, give them a little speed boost before maybe they take a jump. So let's see how we can do that. So first, I'm going to need a part. I'm just going to use a simple part for the little boost block. I'm not going to make it super big. Maybe just a little 4x4. Four four. I'm also going to change the form factor to plate. Just when it's nice and thin, really easy to run over it. There we go. And let's let's make it yellow and smooth. Why not? Make it look kind of cool. Neat. So that's all we need for the part. Let's go ahead and add a script to it. So just like in the last lesson when we learned about making a moving platform and how we ended up putting a script inside of it so we can have multiple moving platforms. We're going to insert a part, oh, pardon me, and insert a script into this part. And in fact, let's give this part a cool name. We're going to call it Speed Boost. And here we go. Now we are in our script. Before we get too deep into this, let's review what we're going to do, because it's always good to go into coding and programming with a plan. And what I want my Speed Boost to do is if a player steps on it, I want that player to go really fast and then maybe like a second or two later they go back to their normal speed. I think that sounds sounds reasonable. So let's start off with what's actually the harder part, which is checking to see if something so see if someone stepped on the part at all. Now to do that, we're going to need two things. First, we're going to need a function. And this is just like a function functions we've been making. And I'm going to make, call this function stepped on. And I'm going to give it a parameter called part. Now, before we really do anything inside this function, I just want to make sure the function is there. We're going to use this function with a new concept called an event. Now, events are really cool because they are basically triggers in your game. Because if you remember the last lesson, we just had a loop that made a part move back and forth, and we were kind of in control the whole time. We knew when everything would happen. But in this case, we don't know when a player is going to necessarily step onto our brick. You know, we can't put, put like an arbitrary pause in the game to wait before we change the player's speed. We want to do it right as soon as the player touches the brick. So as it turns out, there's a really convenient event for that. So what I'll need, one more thing I'll actually need, we're going to make a local speed boost. I'm going, to, I'm going to set the parent. What we're going to do on store the parent in the speed boost variable so we can have access to this brick. If we do speed boost dot touched, this is a special keyword for a special type of event that all parts in Roblox have access to. All parts will know if they hit another part, and we call that it touches another part. And what we can do is on this event, we can use a special word called connect. And when, it can, and when we connect something, when we connect to a event, we can give it a function. And in this case, I'm just gonna give it our stepped on function. And all this line here says is that when the speed boost is touched, so again, speed boost is the part we have in our world, it's the yellow guy over here. When he's touched, we're connecting a function to that. In this case, we're connecting this function that we made up here called stepped on. And so, well, what you'll notice, let's just do a little print statement here. I'm gonna say print I got hit. If we enter our game and we run over our block, notice it triggers. Triggers I got hit. Because again, as soon as it got touched, the stepped on function got called, which then printed out our little line here. Now the cool thing about the touched event 
And this isn't true for every event, but it is true for some. The touched event allows you to have a parameter. In this case, which part touched the other one? Because that's really important to know. Because we want to make sure that it was a, a person that stepped on the brick. Because we could just have another part above this brick. And this will actually fire that, that event. At least it should have. Hmm, that's weird. Oh, well, we didn't have a, uh, we didn't print out anything anymore. Oops, my bad. Print hit. That was confusing. Let's try that again. There we go. See how it's triggering hit, even though just a part touched it. So it's important to know which part touched it. And we can even do something like print out the part's name. That's kind of useful. Now you see that part's touching it. Now it's the left leg, right leg, parts of the humanoid, parts of the character. So what we really want to do in this case is we want to see if it was the player character that stepped on the part, not just any arbitrary thing in the world. So how can we check for this? Well, if we hit play solo, we can actually take a look at how a player character is made. See on here I have this player one. It's got all kinds of things in it. It's got all my hats, my shirt. And it's got all the parts that make up the body. And you'll notice that when we've been stepping on this part, or when it was printing out stuff, again I deleted that line, there's no, notice that the right leg and the left leg, which are these guys, those ones were triggering it because those are the parts that are stepping on it. Well, both of those were part of the player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say local parent is part.parent because I want to see what this part is, what its parent is. And I want to check to see if that parent is a player. The way we can do that is we can use this special thing called an if statement. We can say if game.players get player from character parent. Then, so there's a lot I've written here, but let's break this down so it's not so confusing. So I've introduced a couple new things. First, we have this thing called an if statement. We said if this big long thing of text, then, and we have some blank space and end. Well, this is very similar to functions, very similar to that while loop we made in the last lesson. Any code, we'll be putting code in between the then and the end. Because what happens in an if statement is it checks. It checks the thing that's in between the if and the end, if and the then to see if that to see if that exists. If so, then it will do the code. So we can say print it was a player. You'll notice if we hit play solo, notice nothing's happening when this part steps on it. But I stepped on it, it goes crazy. And all this line here is it's looking in game.players, which is this object right over here, and it's calling a special function. Again, we've been using functions a lot. This is kind of like print. It's kind of like our custom functions, where you can give it an object, like a model. In this case, we're giving it parent. And we want to see if that if that is the bot if that's the character of a player. In this case, it is. Well, when it's my left leg. So notice when this block when this part touches it, its parent is workspace. And that's not a player character. That's you know, that's just the workspace. But if I step on it, we'll notice how it's added more it was a player's. That's because the part that's touching it, it's either a left leg or right leg, and its parent is player one. And that corresponds to this player one. 
Don't worry if you don't understand this too much, but you can just kind of take this as sort of a little rule of thumb that if you want to check to see if a model happens to be a player character, you can use this line of code right here. You can just copy and paste it into your game and it'll work just fine. So let's go ahead and do something now that we know that we've got a player. So what do we want to do? Well, we said before we want to make the player go faster. Let's take a look at our player character and see how we might be able to do that. If I go into the player, I look at this special object called a humanoid. Now, a humanoid is something that all player characters are going to have in it, and it does a lot of cool things. There's a lot of neat ways we can customize the character using this. What we're going to look at right now is this property called walk speed. By default, it's 16, but you'll notice if we increase it, let's say like 30, we go super fast. Even go like 50 or 100, depends on how crazy you want to go with this. And we can just do this in our script. I'm going to reset. So we know that parent in this case is a player character. So we're just going to say parent.humanoid colon, or pardon me, not colon, dot walk speed equals, let's make them really fast, let's make it 50. That seems pretty cool. And so what will happen is again, we're uh, part hit our pad here, the speed boost, it triggered this function. It, got, it gets the parent of the part that touched it. And we check to see if that part, or pardon me, if that parent is a character model. And if it is, then, well, we just set the walk speed of the humanoid to 50. Let's try it out. So we're just walking, kind of doing our normal thing. But if we step on the brick, whoa, we're going super crazy fast now. That's awesome. So one more thing before we wrap up. I remember remember we said at the beginning, one of our goals was to make it so this is just a temporary boost. We don't want you running this fast the whole level. So all we can do, well, all we have to do is we just say wait. Let's say we'll give them like two seconds of super speed. And then we can just copy and paste this line and set the speed back to normal, which is 16 by default. So we go into our world, step on our brick, go super fast, super fast, super fast, and then we slow down. And that's all there is to it. And keep in mind, we can do all sorts of things with this. I mean, I can imagine you can do all sorts of interesting applications, like if the player steps on something, maybe you can change what color they are, or maybe you can launch them into the air. You can even make them take damage or get healed. All you have to do is follow this basic format of connecting a touched event. All you have to do for that is just make a function. And after that, check to see if the parent of the part that hit the other one, to see if that's a player character, which is what we did in this line. And if so, we can do anything we want to it. In this case, we increase the walk speed. But there are all sorts of things we can do. Again, we've got health. We can set the health of the character. We can increase it, decrease it. We can tell the character to jump. We can do all sorts of neat stuff. But I think this is a nice little, nice little widget for now for an obby. I think it can work nicely in a lot of games. So I think that'll be all for this lesson. But stay tuned, we've got more coming right up.